So there are many reasons people choose outdoor mushroom cultivation for growing their mushrooms. And actually, in fact, many large mushroom farms that supply to grocery stores and supermarkets and things of that sort choose the same um, cultivation me method that we are going to do today. So I am actually going to show you guys how to inoculate logs using mushroom spore plugs. And as I said, this is an extremely popular method for outdoor cultivation that can be done on a very small scale, one to two logs, up to an extremely large scale for a huge mushroom farm. Now, what kind of mushrooms can we grow? So there are many different types of mushrooms that you can grow this way. And some of the most popular ones are of course, shiitake. We have oyster mushrooms. We have lion's mane, turkey tail, reishi, chicken of the woods, and even hen of the woods. Um, mataki can be grown using the same method. So what is the best wood or logs to use for this method? Well, most mushroom enthusiasts are going to tell you that oak is the best wood to use, especially something like red oak. Um, oak is an extremely hard wood. It provides a very sustainable environment for the um, mushroom mycelium, and it really does not matter the species of mushroom. Most seem to adhere nicely to oak. Now, if you do not have oak available, there are some other trees that can be used, such as alder, sugar maple, um, willow, and even poplar. So what size log should you use? Now it is usually recommended for 40 spore plugs, a four foot log that's about 10 to 12 inches around in diameter is preferable. Now the larger the log, the longer fruiting you will actually have, but it's going to take a little longer before you get your first initial fruiting. So it really depends in preference. So placement of your logs is very important. You want to make sure that where it is that you're placing your logs is um, natural habitat for mushrooms. So for starters, obviously not in direct sunlight. All mushrooms need shade. So make sure you are providing enough shade for these logs. The second thing that they are going to require is a steady, good airflow. So if you are placing these logs in um, the forest back a little ways, make sure that this area still has a nice, good airflow. Now, I know many people that take um, on, on a small scale mushroom farming will take one to two logs and lean them against a shaded side of their house. This is excellent, especially when it comes to the watering maintenance of these logs. So after inoculation, it is very important to water these logs for the first couple months. If the logs dry out, your mycelium will die and obviously ruin all the hard work that you've done. So if you intend to have success with mushroom farming, it is absolutely vital to keep your logs wet. So right here, I actually have some blue oyster spore plugs. And this is what your spore plug should look like. Now you can see all of the white mycelium already growing very nicely on these plugs. Now mushroom plugs can be purchased from many different companies um, online. They are very easy to find and come in a wide variety of different types of mushrooms. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work, show you guys the process and show you what it entails. So the first thing you're going to do is drill your holes. Now, when you're drilling your holes, you want to make them about two inches deep, a little bit deeper than the plug itself. This is because we are going to need a little bit of headspace at the top to fill in with wax. Now, when you make your lines to drill your holes, you're going to do um, one line of holes and then your next line is actually going to be alternated. So if you have two holes here, your next line should have a hole in the middle. You're going to do this around the entire log and then I'll show you how we fill it with wax. Now, 
Now that the holes are drilled, you're just gonna place your spore plugs in the holes and tap them in with a hammer or rubber mallet. Next, you're gonna have your paraffin cheese wax or beeswax melting in the process. And you're gonna spoon a tiny amount in the head gap space that you have left in between the spore and the top of the bar. This is gonna ensure that no contaminants um, contaminate your spore plugs. So how soon will you get mushrooms? So depending on the species of mushrooms, most take about two years. Now oyster mushrooms, which is actually the uh, spawn plugs that I have right here, oyster mushrooms fruit extremely fast. So with me inoculating now in um, early spring this year, I should have my first fruiting by early spring, early summer next year. Now things such as lion's mane, reishi, turkey tail, they may take a little longer. And sometimes depending on the size of the logs that you use, it could take up to three years. Now, inoculating mushrooms or cultivating outdoor mushrooms is absolutely a game of patience. So let's talk about log placement real quick. So as you see behind me, I went ahead and did the slant method and there are many mushroom farmers that choose this method. This is a popular method when it comes to growing things such as lion's mane and oyster. Now when it comes to shiitake, many shiitake farmers prefer to use the log cabin formation. So I will put a picture and this would be two logs stacked vertically and two horizontally and so on. Now, once again, this all matters um, or, or really just depends on the kind of mushroom that it is you're trying to cultivate. Now, I have grown shiitake on this leaning method and it works just fine. So if you are somebody that's doing a small scale and you just want one or two shiitake logs outside your house, this leaning method is, is absolutely fine. As long as you're providing, once again, the shade and good airflow, everything should be um, successful for you. So I hope everybody has enjoyed this video and hopefully it inspires others to take up the wonderful hobby of outdoor mushroom cultivation. This is a great way to not only become self-sufficient, use your land, it's growing your own food, even if it is just mushrooms, it's still a form of sustainability and it's a beautiful way to receive nutritional and medicinal benefits. Um, there's nothing better than coming out during the spring, summer, and fall seasons and having fresh mushrooms that you know um, are exactly what you, you inoculated. So it's a safe way to harvest these mushrooms and enjoy them throughout most of the year. As always, I am a huge advocate for doing as much as you can for yourself. And this is absolutely a great method for doing what you can for yourself as far as growing mushrooms. So once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. And until next time, stay wild.